let's talk about leveled compaction. Now, hang on to your hat. This is a little complicated. Level compaction probably is the most complicated. Actually, it is the most complicated way to compact data. Compaction in general is not a very understood topic. And if you can get through this one, all the other compaction schemes are a lot easier. But it is a pretty important process. Having compaction for a certain workloads and having it tailored to workloads makes a lot of sense given the amount of data that has to get moved around and how much disk IO has to be generated. Let's start from the beginning. Level compaction. I'm going to show you this and how it works graphically. And I think this is the best way to understand level compaction, actually any compaction. If I explained it to you, you wouldn't be able to explain it back. If I show you, I think it will make a lot more sense. So how does it work? Well, level compaction, the leveled part actually is important because as an SS table is written to disk, that data is sitting there, it's immutable. However, when that data is written, now we have to employ some sort of compaction strategy with it. Level compaction looks at that first SS table that's written to disk as level zero, the first file. And as I write more data, another flush to disk, that goes into level zero. Now what happens? We just don't want these things filling up the disk the way they are. Compaction is an important process. So if I wanna compact using level compaction, what do I do now with these two SS tables? Well, this is where the level comes in. We move it to the next level up. It gets promoted to level one. How it does that, similar like any other compaction strategy, it tries to group things together. So in this case, the 12s. In that level, we're looking at the max SS table size. So this is what's gonna help guide us through our levels. So we're inside of that max SS table size right now. Great, let's do another compaction. Boom, just went over. Okay, now what? Well, we create a new file. So we do another compaction with the 52s. That goes over. We do the next one. It's important to note that level zero is really the landing place. Everything in level zero will get promoted. So it's right away. So as we compact, everything's going beyond the max SS table size. Awesome, okay, level one is now ready to go. However, with the max SS table size comes another parameter, and that is the maximum size for level one. The max level one size is a multiplier of the max SS table size. In this example, we're gonna say two, but in the real world, it's 10, that's the default. So let's look at the example again. If max L1 size is two times the max SS table size, that's how much we can store in level one. We're over, so now we need to trigger another compaction. So we could take those two sizes, those two max SS table sizes, but I'm gonna have to create a level two to fit more data in my disk, to satisfy the leveling. This is where that level work comes from, we're building more levels. So what we can do is just move that file down to level two, do a quick size check, up, oh, we're still over, so we're gonna have to move another file down, awesome. Now everything seems to fit. We have everything leveled properly, everything's in the right place. Great, the levels are settled. Level two max size is a multiplier, again, two times level one. So you can see how it starts growing in that way. So if we look at our data, everything's fitting neatly in the levels. We are totally fine now. There's no more compaction that needs to get done. But inevitably, we're gonna start looking at all the sizing, but what's gonna happen? SS tables are gonna still be written to disk. And when that happens, it promotes the level zero to level one immediately, and the same process happens again. And it just keeps going, and we're gonna start compacting and compacting again. Now, if you look at what we have here, we just went over the sizing again. So here we go again, we're gonna be compacting down into level two. Max SS table size is too big, we compact that one down, we create a new SS table. Now we have everything in level two, Level one is satisfied, we're within the boundaries for all the different sizing, great. But like I said, we're not gonna stop. We're gonna keep writing data into the system. This whole thing happens over and over and over again. It's very intensive. So when we're writing data to the system, it gets promoted into the right levels. And those levels start moving down from level one to level two to level three, to level four. The good thing here is that we know where that data is gonna be. And as it gets promoted further, it gets written less. Now, as I mentioned, we used a multiplier of two, two times max SS table size. The real world, it's 10. So it didn't look as good on the example, 
but you get what we're trying to do here. We're showing multiple layers. 10 is the default. You can change that if you need to. In this case, probably best to leave it alone. The configuration, as you can see here in the diagram, SS table max size, that's 160 meg. That's the default. You could change that. Again, that's one of those things that you better not change it unless you know exactly what you're doing because you could really mess things up quickly. And nobody wants to deal with a blown up level compaction system. It will get really crazy fast because of how the levels work. You can have things promoting really quickly and that's just gonna eat up a lot of disk IO. So once we have these SS tables exceeding these amounts, that's when we go. We do another write. In the example that we had, we had pretty large partitions. So things were getting promoted pretty regularly. In the real world, they don't get promoted quite as fast unless you're doing a lot of writes. The smaller your partitions, the closer you're gonna get to that actual 160 meg size. That 160 megs is just a marker. If it goes over, that's fine. We're trying to keep the data close to each other. If you go and look at the actual file system, you'll see that there's different sizes. There's not just 160 meg chunks of data in your disk. So that's what's going on there when you go look. Level compaction is best used for reads. And here's why. So if you think about what you're trying to do with this data, you're trying to get it to a level where it's stopped. So occasional writes, meaning it doesn't promote a lot, but the reads are very consistent. It knows exactly where that data is and it's very stable. Meaning that level one, level two, level three, by the time you get to level three, it's not gonna be written as much. And you know that that data is always gonna be there. So it caches nicely, it's just really good for reads. The idea is that we're trying to group this data together very neatly and succinctly. Level compaction does that. Level compaction is not just a Cassandra topic, it is a general topic in distributed systems, especially with log structured storage. However, Cassandra's done a lot with level compaction, tailoring it to specific data models for Cassandra. As you can see from this table, things add up really quickly. You're adding a zero every single time. There are multipliers. So it can get pretty large. By the time you get to level five or six, it is a lot of data in that level. So between level one, level two, and level three, we have a certain amount of size, which is about 10% of that level four. Disk usage is also something you need to consider with level compaction. The general rule about compaction is you need a little more space, not everything. So it isn't 50% more of the disk space you have. And the reason being is because you can have one level above overlap the level below. It needs to be able to compact everything from that size down one level. So a little more. 11x is generally the multiplier per level. If you need to compact from level one to level two or level two to level three, you can predict how much you're gonna need for that. So if you're at level two, then you're gonna need 1.6 terabytes of space left for level three. If you're filling up level three, you're gonna need 160 gigabytes plus a little more to compact down to level four. In general, the disk usage wastes a lot less of the disk, and that's a good thing. Other compaction strategies aren't quite as miserly with your disk. Level compaction is really good for that. The other advantage is that obsolete records can disappear really quickly. As they get promoted, they get removed. The downside though, is it is very IO intensive. You can see some of these aren't really that good. IO intensity, that's the biggest problem with level compaction. If you're doing a lot of writes, you're generating a lot of level zero files, which then get promoted. The more promotion means more big files have to get moved around. If you're going from say level three to level four, that's a lot of data moving around. So that's why high writes on a level compaction system, is not a good idea. You should consider something like size tiered or time window in that case. But that disk intensity is really what we're trying to avoid anyway, because Cassandra does love to use disk IO and it's important for your reads. You do not want compaction impacting your reads. Another problem that can happen is with all these levelings is that eventually compaction will start falling behind. Level zero will get really far behind and then you're in trouble. One of the safety valves for that is that level zero will then switch to size tier compaction to bring that file size down. It's a catch up mechanism, but what it does is it eliminates the need to promote those SS tables to the next level in that emergency state. And that is an emergency state. It shouldn't happen all the time. It's there to keep you from having all these files pending, waiting to go to level one, when really your system is running out of disk IO. Well, I hope you got through this okay. Level compaction is definitely the hardest one to understand. The different levels and how they work, somewhat complicated. It's not as bad as some people think. Hopefully the graphics really helped you visualize 
what's going on with those files as they're getting promoted. And just know some of the drawbacks, the good and the bad. And level of compaction could be your friend.